Hello there, I'm Sumit Bansal and in this video, I'm going to show you 10 less known Excel keyboard shortcuts that you should know. And I'm not talking about the keyboard shortcuts that everyone is using. These are the ones that you won't see many people using. So let's see what these are. Let's start with a good one that I've rarely seen people using. So here I have this data set and I want to filter all these records, let's say based on this name, Roy Parker. So I'm going to apply a filter and then I'm going to filter it based on this name. Now to apply the filter, the keyboard shortcut is Control Shift L. So you hold the Control and the Shift key and then press the L key. Now this is not the shortcut I'm talking about, but again, this is a useful shortcut that you should remember. Now, once you have applied the filter, you would see these filter icons in the headers of the column. So here I'm going to come to this column and then use the shortcut Alt and down arrow key. And when I do that, it shows me the filter menu. And here, what I've seen people do is they will continue to hold the down arrow key and then go down. And then once they are in the search bar, they can type the name Roy and then hit enter and it is going to filter the records. But here is a better way to do this. So you come to this cell, which is C1 in this case, I would hold the Alt key and the down arrow key. Then I would press the E key. And as soon as I press the E key, my cursor comes here in this box. And now I can just enter the name Roy and it is going to filter the records. So what you can do is Alt, Down Arrow key and then E key. So it jumps to this search box and then you can type anything you want. If you want to go down, then you can press the Down Arrow key. So this is going to save you time if this is something that you do quite often. Another important shortcut that you can use is when you have applied the filter. So let's say in this case, I've already applied the filter here and I want to remove the filter. What I can do is again, Alt, Down Arrow key and then press C. And when you do that, it clears the filter. Scrolling horizontally in Excel has been a pain. If you have a large data set, you would either have to come here to this scroll bar and use it, or you would have to use the cursor arrows to go right and left. But now, if you are using Excel with Microsoft 365, you have a new keyboard shortcut. Hold the control and the shift key and then use the mouse wheel on your mouse. And with the mouse wheel, you can scroll to the right and left easily. Now this shortcut works for the Excel desktop version, but if you're using Excel online or Google Sheets, then you can use the keyboard shortcut shift and then scroll wheel. So control shift scroll wheel for Excel on desktop and shift scroll wheel for Excel online or Google Sheets. Now here is a keyboard shortcut that can be useful when you are presenting your data. So in this case, I have this data set and let's say I'm presenting it or I'm on a call and I'm uh, showing my screen and I want to focus on this. So I want to zoom this. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. So I can hold the control key and then use my mouse scroll wheel to increase the zoom level or I can come here and then at the bottom right of my screen, I have this zoom slider that I can use or I can click on this 100% number and then it opens the zoom dialog box where I can set the zoom level. But if there is a specific selection that you want to quickly zoom and want everyone to focus on that only, you can use this keyboard shortcut Alt W G. And when you do that, it is going to bring this entire selection, zoom it in such a way that only this is visible on the screen. See what happens when I use Alt W G, it zooms it to 400% and only this part is visible on the screen. If you want to go back to 100% zoom, you can then use Alt W J and it will bring it back to 100%. So this is a useful trick where let's say you're focusing on a specific part, you can just select it and use Alt W G and it is only going to zoom it to such a level that that selection is going to be visible on the screen. Now remember that you cannot zoom more than 400%. So if I just come here and I select only these cells and use this keyboard shortcut, it will still zoom to a maximum of 400%. Now let me show you an Excel keyboard shortcut that will help you in a situation that frustrates so many Excel users. So here I have this data and I have applied conditional formatting on this data so that it highlights all the records where the country is US and the sale value is more than 20,000. But let's say I want to change this now. I want to change the conditional formatting rule so that it highlights all the records where the country is US, but the sale value is less than 20,000. So all I'm going to do is go into the conditional formatting rule that I've set and change it. So I select this range of cells, go to the home tab. Then here I'm going to click on conditional formatting and then click on manage rules. And here I have the rule that I've already applied that is showing the records in green color. So I'm going to edit this rule. Now, what I'm going to do is bring my cursor here at the end of the formula, and then I'm going to change this greater than 
sign and I'm going to change it into a less than sign. But now see what happens when I use my left arrow key to go to the left in this formula. See what happens. It gives me a cell reference. And the reason this is happening is if you look at the bottom left part of your screen, you would notice that your cursor is right now in the point mode, which means that if I use my cursor, it is going to point to a cell and I want to change this and bring it into an edit mode so that I can freely take my cursor anywhere using the arrow keys. So I'm going to remove this reference and now I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, which is F2. Just press the F2 key and see what happens. In the bottom left part of your screen, you will notice that now it says in edit mode. And I can now freely use my cursor to go here and change this to a less than sign. Now, if you want to bring it back into the point mode so that you can use cell references and put the cell references here, you can press F2 again. And when you do that, it is going to bring it back into the point mode. So you can see now when I use it, it inserts a cell reference. So this is something that frustrates a lot of users because they do not know they want to move the cursor, but instead of moving, it shows them a cell reference. So all you have to do is press an F2 key. And this is something that is going to work everywhere where you're facing this problem. It could be a condition formatting dialog box. It could be a name manager box. It could be even a cell in Excel. This is one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts. So here I have this data and let's say I want to move column C to the left so that I have rep name, then reporting manager, then region and then sales, which means I need to move column C and bring it right after column A. Now, usually the way people do it is they would come here, they would either select this range or select the entire column, then they would copy it or cut it and then they would come here, paste this so that it gets inserted between A and B. But the faster way to do this is you select the column, then you hold the shift key and then bring your cursor to the edge of this selection. And when you do that, you will notice that your cursor changes into a four icon arrow. And now you click the left mouse button key and then drag it on the left. And when you're doing it, you would see this thick green color line. You'll see it when you're moving around this thick green color line, bring it where you want this column to be and then leave the left mouse key. And when you do that, it is going to bring that column there. Now that column comes here and whatever was there in this place, it shifts to the right. And this is going to work for one column, for one row, multiple rows or even cells. For example, if I want to, let's say, move both of these columns, then I can just come here, drag it to the right and it is going to move both of these columns to the right and the sales column goes to the left. Let me bring it back here. You can also do this with rows. So for example, if I want to bring this somewhere down, then I can select this part of the cell, uh, this part of the range, hold the shift key, then click here and then drag it down. And you can see the thick green line. And when I leave it here, it is going to bring this record here and everything else automatically moves up. So this is a very simple way to quickly switch columns and uh, rows. If you want to quickly swap uh, cells, then you can do this. It works for an entire column. It works for a range. If you manually select this range or the entire column, it works for rows as well. And it works for cells as well. For example, if I want to interchange these regions, I can just come here and just only swap these two cells. Now, one great thing about this is when you are selecting a range and doing this, it is not going to impact anything which is around this selection, which means that in this case, let's say I'm going to move this, this row, but I have something here on the right. Let me give this a color. Let me also just put some numbers here. Now, let's say I want to move this, but I don't want anything to happen to the data, which is on the right, which is in yellow color. That is also going to work with this shortcut. I would just come here, select this selection, hold the shift key, bring it down and only this part of the, the data is going to readjust and this is not going to be impacted. So this is a great keyboard shortcut if you want to quickly move rows and columns within your data set and even if you want to move the entire row or column in your worksheet. One way to quickly go to a cell that is far off or a named range that is far off is to use the name box. So here I can enter the cell reference where I want to go and it is going to take me there. For example, let's say I want to go to K20. So I type K20 here and now when I hit enter, it takes me to K20. Now there is a keyboard shortcut that would quickly take you to the name box. So no matter where you are in your worksheet, you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt F3 and it is going to take you to the name box and then you can quickly type the cell reference name where you want to go. For example, in this case, if I want to go to S123, I can go there. 
you can also type the name of named ranges and it is going to take you to that specific name range or a table. So here again, if I use Alt F3, it takes me there and I've already created a named range with the name example. And now when I hit enter, it takes me to this named range that has been named example. So if you want to quickly move around and you use name box anyway, then this keyboard shortcut can be quite handy. By default, Excel is going to show you the quick access toolbar, the ribbon area, and the formula bar. But if you want more working area in the grid, then you can hide these elements by using some keyboard shortcuts. So to hide the ribbon, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control F1. So hold the Control key and press the F1 key. And when you do that, it hides the ribbon. And if you want to get it back, you can again use the same keyboard shortcut Control F1. If you want to hide the quick access toolbar as well as the ribbon, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift F1. So hold the Control and the Shift key and press the F1 key. And when you do that, it is going to hide the quick access toolbar as well as the ribbon. And if you also want to hide the formula bar, you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt W V F. So Alt W V F, that is also going to hide the formula bar. So now you have nothing except the entire grid area. Now, if you want to get these elements back, you can again use the same keyboard shortcut. So Control Shift F1 to get back the quick access toolbar and the ribbon and Alt W V F to get back the formula bar. Here I have this data set where there are notes in some of the cells. You can see that these are the cells that contains a note. And this is also visually indicated by showing a red triangle at the top right part of the cell. Now, if you want to select all these cells that have the note, select any cell anywhere in the worksheet, then use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift O. So hold the Control and the Shift key and then press the O key. And when you do that, it is going to select all the cells that have these notes. Now you can give a color to these cells or if you want to delete all these notes, you can right click and then click on Delete Note. Now, one thing to know is that till a few years ago, this was called a comment, but then Microsoft changed it. And now this is called a note and comment is something different, which is like a threaded comment. Here I have this data set where I have some of the rows that are hidden. You can see between 3 and 11, there are some rows that are hidden. Similarly, between 13 and 17, there are some rows that are hidden. Now, if I come and I copy this data and I paste it anywhere, it is also going to copy the hidden row. See what happens when I copy this data and I come here and I paste it. You can see this is a much larger data set. This is not these rows only because it is also going to copy the hidden rows. So let me press Control Z. Now, if I only want to copy the rows that are visible, you can use a keyboard shortcut. So select the cells, then use the keyboard shortcut Alt semicolon. And when you do that, it is going to only select the cells that are visible. It is not going to select the cells that are hidden. Now I can just do a simple copy paste. So Control C to copy it. And then when I come here and I paste it, you can see it has only pasted the, the cells that are visible. So if you want to only select visible cells, use the keyboard shortcut Alt semicolon. If you don't mind slightly longer keyboard shortcuts, here is an interesting one for you. I have this tab that is named hash 10 and I want to rename this tab. You can use a keyboard shortcut to do that. And the keyboard shortcut is Alt H O R. And when you use that, it is going to bring the cursor in the tab name. The entire tab name is going to be selected. So you can just come here and type anything you want. And here is an interesting thing. You can also use a similar keyboard shortcut, which is Alt O H R. So whether you use Alt H O R or Alt O H R, both are going to work. It is going to select the tab name and then you can rename it easily. In the beginning of the video, I told you I'm going to show you 10 keyboard shortcuts, but I also have two nice bonus shortcuts for you. So here you can see I have some icons that are in the quick access toolbar. For example, this one inserts a checkbox. This one opens the go to special dialog box. Now, what you can also do is access these features that you have added to the quick access toolbar using the Alt key. See what happens when I press the Alt key. It shows me these numbers in the quick access toolbar and the, this autosave is one, then this is two and three and so on. Now I can access these features, these icons by just pressing the number. For example, in this case, let's say if I want to insert the checkbox, I can either come here and click on this 
or I can use the keyboard shortcut Alt 6 to so press the Alt key and then press the 6 key. Similarly, if I want to open the go to special dialog box, I can either click on this or I can just use the shortcut Alt 7 and it is going to open this dialog box. So if there are things that you use quite often, some features, then you can go to any of these things that you find in the ribbon, add them quick to, uh, to the quick access toolbar. So just right click, then add to quick access toolbar and then you can access it easily with the Alt keyboard shortcut. Now, when you have nine icons in the quick access toolbar, your shortcut is going to be Alt 1 and Alt 2 and so on till Alt 9. But when you have more than nine icons, then the 10th icon is going to become Alt 01 and then Alt 02 and so on. So when you add those icons and press the Alt key, it is going to tell you what is the number and what is the number that you need to use. Now, the second bonus keyboard shortcut, which is again very interesting. Here I have this data and let's say I want to copy this data and paste it here. Now, usually people use the control C, control V, and they also know about the paste special shortcuts. But here is a shortcut that not many people know about. If I paste this data simply by using control V and then press the control again, it is going to show me an additional menu. See this control part here? If I press control key again, it shows me this menu and then I can use the keyboard shortcut for any of these options where I can paste it as values or just formulas or just uh, formatting or just the column width or a linked picture. Let me show you. So let me delete this. Let me come here, copy this data. And if I come here and I only want the values, I can control V, control V. It only gives me the values. If I want column width, I can press control again and then press W. And it gives me the formatting, including the values only and the column width. If you only want the formulas, you can press F. Now let me show you another interesting thing here. If I copy this data, come here, use control V to paste it, then control to open the this additional menu. And then I press I, which is for this option here, which is for linked picture. See what happens. It gives me a linked picture. And the, th the way linked picture work is this picture is actually linked to this range. So if I make any changes to this range here, that is going to be reflected in the linked picture. See what happens. I come here and I give this a color, let's say yellow color. You'll see that the picture automatically updates to show the color. If I come here and I make any change, for example, I change this to Asia, you'll see that the change happens in the picture itself because the picture is actually linked to the data. And you can put this picture anywhere in the worksheet or even anywhere in the workbook. So if you have charts in many different places, you can create these linked pictures and then put all the charts together in a dashboard if you want. Or if you want to resize these and you do not want uh, your creating a kind of summary sheet or a dashboard and you don't want things to be taking a lot of space, you can create these link picture and then you can easily resize them. So this is again a very useful keyboard shortcut that not many people know about. So these are the keyboard shortcuts that I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you have learned something new. And if you found something interesting that you did not know before, please let me know in the comment section. And if you knew it all, you are an Excel rock star. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.